From KPU News in Austin, you're watching Texas This Week with Ashley Goodo. Good Sunday morning. Before the Texas House voted overwhelmingly to impeach now suspended Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, a top Republican representative and one of Paxton's senior advisors exchanged some contentious text messages. More on that in just a minute, but first, let's get to the three things you need to know in Texas politics. The U.S. Department of Justice is suing Texas Governor Greg Abbott. The DOJ filed a complaint asking the court to make Texas remove its floating buoy barrier in the Rio Grande River and the razor wire fencing on the border. Department leaders warned Texas it would take legal action if the state didn't commit to removing the barrier by 1 p.m. Monday morning. Governor Abbott instead sent a letter to the president Monday morning defending the state's actions and arguing the Constitution grants Texas the sovereign authority to protect its borders. The governor says the barriers discourage migrants from trying to cross into the state, forcing them to go to points of entry. Writing in his letter, quote, Texas will see you in court, Mr. President. Texas A&M University making national headlines. The Texas Tribune reporting the university placed Professor Joy Alonzo, a respected opioid expert, on leave censored and investigated her after she was accused of making negative comments about Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick during a lecture at UT's medical school in Galveston. While the university won't release what was allegedly said, medical students in the lecture told Trib reporters Alonzo made a comment about the Lieutenant Governor's office killing a bill to legalize fentanyl test strips. That legislation, championed by Governor Greg Abbott, was passed by the House of Representatives and died in the Senate during the legislative session. Alonzo's leave was lifted and an internal investigation did not confirm any wrongdoing. Meanwhile, on Thursday, U.S. Senator John Cornyn from Texas introduced legislation to legalize testing strips, noting a similar bill overwhelmingly passed the Texas House. A group of booksellers, including Austin's Book People, are suing the state of Texas over a new law requiring vendors to assign ratings to books based on depictions of or references to sex. The new law also requires school libraries to remove books with a sexually explicit rating. Once the rating guidelines are released, booksellers would have four months to submit ratings to the TEA or risk being barred from selling books to schools. Booksellers say that's an impossible task. In KVU's commitment to transparency, we do want to point out the attorney for the plaintiffs, Laura Prather, also represents KVU in various legal matters unrelated to this case. The Senate impeachment trial of suspended Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton starts in about five weeks. This week, a report from the Dallas Morning News reveals lawmakers were quite unhappy with the AG for asking the state to pay his settlement with whistleblowers. And it was clearly communicated in a string of contentious text messages. Laura Magahi, the investigative reporter for the Dallas Morning News who broke the story, joined me to talk about what she learned. Tell us a little bit overall what happened here. We received a tranche of text messages sent between Collin County State Representative Jeff Leach and Michelle Smith, who is senior advisor to Ken Paxton. And this test text message thread uh, went on over months from January through to June. And it really gave us a sense of the mood in the Capitol leading up to General Paxton's impeachment. Specifically, according to Leach's texts, lawmakers were very unhappy with his request for $3.3 million to settle this whistleblower lawsuit. And Leach warned Smith that Paxton had to come and defend the funding request and explain himself. One of the things, one of the text messages that I found particularly interesting was Leach said, if you come and you explain, everything will be fine. Um, and that really deviated right from where we are right now, where we are getting ready to have the impeachment trial. Tell us what happened in between the, that time. Sure. Uh, well, that was one of the early texts. Uh, uh, Jeff Leach reached out and said, hey, you know, get General Paxton to come and explain this funding request. And as long as we have all the information, everything will probably be good. And um, Ms. Smith actually encouraged the representative to talk to General Paxson privately. She repeatedly said, look, I can't control your actions. If you want to hold a public hearing on this, 
uh, you do you is actually what she said. But uh, I, Miss Smith, encourage you to talk to the general one on one. Uh, Representative Leach did not like that. He did not like being asked to do things behind closed doors. And he said that General Paxson had to have a public statement on this and, and make his defense. I will say that General Paxson did answer questions uh, in front of House budget uh, writers um, uh, about February, I want to say. Um, but he deferred most of those questions to a deputy that was sitting beside him. And there wasn't a lot of information that was shed, new information shed at that meeting. And then as far as we know, he never again uh, appeared at a public hearing on the issue at the Capitol before he was impeached. Some of these text messages, I would describe them as a little saucy, a little, you know, contentious. Uh, tell us about the details of some of that. What stood out most to you? Well, I won't say on air some of the words that were used because I'm not sure if they'll be appropriate. Um, but there was a pretty heated back and forth between this Paxton advisor and the representative, uh, mostly over her urging him to have these private conversations and him saying it wasn't appropriate. He repeatedly said that while he considers General Paxton a friend, that he wouldn't put his friendship over uh, the duty he felt he had to the taxpayers to explain this $3.3 million request. And then over several weeks, the text kind of devolved into some veiled threats. And at one point, Paxson advisor, Paxson's advisor reminded the representative that she helped campaign for him. And there did appear to be a veiled threat there that, you know, I, I helped get you elected and this could be bad for you if you go against us. So, you know, not very friendly at the end uh, of this text thread. And, you know, this was um, right around the time that we found out that House lawmakers were recommending impeachment for General Paxson. Let's take a step back, though, Lauren, and talk a little bit about what really led up to this. Tell us about this whistleblower settlement. How did this come to be? Sure. So uh, the impeachment proceedings might seem a little complicated, but it all started with this funding request. Uh, Paxton was sued a few years ago by a number of ex-employees who said that he was corrupt. They accused him of bribery and they said that Paxton fired them because they reported him to the FBI. They sued under the whistleblower statute and Paxton's agency decided to settle with this group of whistleblowers. Um, they asked the state legislature to fund that settlement, which would have been $3.3 million. And that's the funding request that did not go over too well with legislators, both Republicans and Democrats. Uh, the House voted overwhelmingly to impeach Paxton based on the allegations that he shouldn't have fired these whistleblowers that the funding request was inappropriate and that the underlying corruption complaints, complaints that these whistleblowers made to the FBI had merit. So, you know, just making this fund, funding request really snowballed for General Paxton. And, you know, now he finds himself one of only two statewide elected officials ever to face an impeachment trial in Texas. And what about those whistleblowers and the settlement? I mean, they, they agreed to settle this and not go to court but where's that money? Where's that funding now? And what's up with them? So the legislature declined to give Paxton's agency that $3.3 million. So the whistleblowers, as of right now, are kind of out on a limb. Um, they have not been paid that settlement money, which means that the whistleblower lawsuit against Paxton is now still active. Uh, you know, Paxton's agency could try to come back again in two years if this is all still an issue. Um, but right now, those uh, four ex-employees who sued and reported Paxton to the FBI have not been paid uh, the money that they were meant to receive under the whistleblower settlement. House budget writers did ask General Paxton at that February hearing that he appeared at, will you pay this $3.3 million out of your campaign fund? Will you, you know, put taxpayers off the hook and, and use your own campaign cash? And General Paxton did not answer the question. Instead, he motioned to the deputy sitting next to him, and that deputy said uh, that's not how the whistleblower law works, that under whistleblower laws, it is the agency that is sued, not the elected official who heads the agency. 
And therefore, it's the agency and therefore the state that would pay any settlement. So that's the only real word we've gotten on whether Paxson would use his own cash. You can find a link to Magahi's full report in the Texas This Week section of KBU.com. That's Texas This Week.